Sorry, didn't mean to frighten anyone. You're a bit late for that! Then there were three more murders. So, so who's in it? it? So let's consider each murder one by one. Professor Plum, you knew that Mr. Body was still alive. Even psychiatrists can tell the difference between patients who are alive or dead. You fired the gun at him in the dark and missed. So you pretended he was dead. That's how you were able to kill him later, unobserved. That's right! He was the missing person in the kitchen after we found the cook dead. But he was with us in the billiard room when we found Yvette screaming. If that's when the cook was killed, how did he do it? I didn't! But you don't expect us to believe that, do you? I expect you to believe it. You killed the cook. She used to be your cook, and she informed on you to Mr. Body. You made one fatal mistake. Sitting here at dinner, Mrs. Peacock told us that she was eating one of her favorite recipes. And monkey's brains, though popular in Cantonese cuisine, are not often to be found in Washington, D.C. Colonel Masters, when we saw the motorist at the front door, you took the key to the weapons cupboard out of my pocket. Then you suggested that we all split up. You separated from Miss Scarlet, crossed the hall, opened the cupboard, took the wrench, ran to the conservatory, entered the lounge through the secret passage, killed the motorist with a blow on the head. Like that! Not so incredible as what happened next. But we all split up again. I went upstairs with you. Yes, you, Mrs. White. And while I was in the master bedroom, you hurried downstairs and turned off the electricity, got the rope from the open cupboard, and throttled Yvette. You were jealous that your husband was stooping Yvette. That's why you killed him, too. Yes. Yes, I did it. I killed Yvette. I hated her so much. It, it, the, it flame, flames, flames on the side of my face, breathing, breath, heaving breaths, heaving. But while we were in the billiard room, Miss Scarlet seized the opportunity and under cover of darkness crossed to the library where she hit the cop whom she'd been bribing on the head with a lead pipe. True or false? True. Who are you? Perry Mason. So it must have been Mr. Green who shot the singing telegram. I didn't do it. Well, there's nobody else left. But I didn't do it. The gun is missing. Whoever's got the gun shot the girl. I shot her. You? So it was you. I was going to expose you. I know. So I choose to expose myself. Please, there are ladies present. You thought Mr. Body was dead, but why? None of you even met him till tonight. You're Mr. Body. <laughs> Wait a minute! So who did I kill? My butler. Oh, shucks. He was expendable, like all of you. I'm grateful to you all for disposing of my network of spies and informers. Saved me a lot of trouble. Now there's no evidence against me. This all has nothing to do with my disappearing nuclear physicist husband or Colonel Mustard's work with the new top-secret fusion bomb. <laughs> no. Communism was just a red herring. But the police will be here any minute. You'll never get away with this, any of you. Why should the police come? Nobody's called them. You mean, oh, my God, of course. So why shouldn't we get away with it? We'll stack the bodies in the cellar, lock it, leave quietly one at a time, and forget that any of this ever happened. And you'll just, you'll just go on blackmailing us all. Of course. Why not? Well, I'll tell you why not. <laughs> Good shot, Green. Very good. Are you a cop? No, I'm a plant. A plant? I thought men like you were usually called a fruit. Very funny. FBI. That phone call from J. Edgar Hoover was for me. I told you I didn't do it. <laughs> Who done it? They all did it. But if you want to know who killed Mr. Body, I did. In the hall, with the revolver. Okay, Chief, take him away. I'm going to go home and sleep with my wife. <laughs>